everybody's probably seen these guys. We're getting on the backside of flowering. Calorie pear. A little bit of background on these folks. So calorie pear actually originated in China. It was brought over here at the turn of the last century for saving the pear industry in the Pacific Northwest. Germplasm was sent over and maintained over in Maryland, and they found some nice showy individuals. And that's where we got the Bradford pear. So Bradford was one that was an ornamental uh, nice showy flowers. And there were other ones that came from that. There's like a half a dozen or dozen or so. And they were touted as being sterile, self-incompatible. And in other words, they are. These are male and female flowers on the same thing. But what happens is you'd get a Cleveland pear planted next to a Bradford pear. And guess what? They would hybridize and they would produce seed and produce lots of it. Or if the graft died and the uh, rootstock came up and from that grafted pear, it would also then create this mass proliferation. So they weren't self-sterile or they weren't sterile completely when they cross-pollinated. One thing that you tend to get here is the wild type pear or the calorie pear, they produce those thorns. And so the uh, Bradford pear and the name varieties, they didn't have quite as many, if, if any. But so now we're seeing these folks like this, they'll be maybe not mixed or not thorned and thorned like this, and they will just take over a field. It used to be where we thought, you know, we, our, our problem was cedar. And you can see it's our number one, the Missouri Invasive Plant Council. Uh, calorie pear is our number one enemy right now. It even beats out bush honeysuckle, although bush honeysuckle is up there. These guys flower right now, and that's what they were produced for, you know, producing their nice showy flowers. But they also, particularly the Bradford pear, it has steep branch angles. So you would get ice damage, you'd get snow damage and wind damage. You would get a lot of included bark in those branch unions. And they are also susceptible to fire blight. So my neighborhood, there's lots of Bradford pears that were planted because they're also very fast growers. They were cheap. So that was usually one that was planted by contract crews early, something green in, in the new neighborhood. We had about four years ago, fire blight come through cool, wet weather. And uh, I'd say probably 80% of the Bradford pears in our neighborhood need to come out because they just look bad. Some things I can kind of point out. So and then in the fall, it has that nice bronze, reddish bronze kind of color to it. That's the fruit that's produced. Pretty bitter. The pretty hard little pear-shaped poems to them. Uh, they'll eventually will soften up. But they have no real wildlife value. They just kind of like high fructose corn syrup. And they'll just kind of proliferate. They'll pass through the gut of birds and wildlife and spread that way as well. Just a real quick thing there. So how we can get rid of them outside of that one shot I showed you, that's actually now a development. Development was anything good, maybe in that particular case, uh, because you just couldn't get rid of it all. Cut stump is where it'll, on these larger trees like this, six inches plus, it'll be cut and applied with a herbicide. And it's got some dye on there. So you can see where you put the herbicide. Uh, we do a process that's also called hack and squirt that can eliminate the stems. Last one is right now, though, those two you can't do now. You really can't effectively get rid of any hardwood tree right now because the sap is up and it'll continue to rise through. I always say if 4th of July, you know, sometime mid-July. And so the herbicide will just be flushed out. So there is one treatment that we can do. It's called a basal bark. And that is where you actually put a 12 to 18 inch band completely around the circumference of the tree and with the herbicide, it can get absorbed in. I'm gonna show you a few things here in one more slide, but I don't like that one because you gotta go all the way around the tree and depending upon the product that you're using, you can get sloppy and you don't wanna do that. We wanna keep the herbicide on the tree and not in the soil running off. So what I'm gonna show you real quick, just a, a broad class of herbicides. This isn't product endorsement of any kind, but these are the ones that particularly on Bradford pear or calorie pears that you can use. One of them is the active ingredient is called triclopyr, and there's a water-based one. And on the label, it'll actually say an amine salt. And Garlon 3A has been the standard bear for a long time. Unfortunately, it's got a danger label. It's not carcinogenic or anything like that. The problem is uh, skin and eye irritant, or in this case, permanent eye damage. And where you normally get, if you've got a large area, your treatment, and you're mixing the chemical, that splash 
can get up. So that's why you always want to have eyeglasses on, you know, pr protective equipment. But there has been a reformulation of that uh, same product called Vastlan. And this one, now it just carries a warning a label in that it just creates maybe temporary eye irritation to it. So just again, different formulations of the same thing. We also have triclopyr and what they call an oil base or an ester base. And this is actually put right on the label, whether it says an amine salt or a tri or an ester. And that's our Garlon 4 is what that one is. And it just carries a warning label. Again, this is a oil base. So you have to do a crop oil a mix. Uh, this helps mix in with the water to dissolve the herbicide. We'll also maybe put a penetrant because again, we'll use this ester base. We can use this one for that basal treatment. And that'll actually help carry the product in through the bark. There's also one out there called a Pathfinder. It's a ready to use, so you don't have to mix anything. You can just use it direct right on the basal bark. And in all the cases you see where we might have a dye included in there, just so you can see where you're putting the product. Those are the ones that are really kind of used for calorie repair. Of course, there's sometimes a cocktail mix of two chemicals, 2,4-D and picloram. I don't like that. It moves. The picloram is kind of a hot chemical and it can kind of move through the soil, but you might see it as Tardon RTU, ready to use, or Pathway, that's one. And we do have glyphosate that can be used in the cut stump and the hack and squirt as well, whether it's any of the combinations of the glyphosate and all the adjuvants that are out there. If you're around in an aquatic area more so, there's formulations of glyphosate out there. This was in the case of like rodeo. But these ones here, I don't stay away from totally, but a triclopyr seems to be my go-to that we tend to see a lot. We don't recommend a lot of foliar spraying unless you really get into a big area like that, because again, you're having to put it over a large area and it's a more dilute solution to it. But again, I just like to keep the product on the thing that I'm trying to eliminate.